Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, um, <laughs> I was going to come back this morning to show, well I am going to come back this morning to show you how I got on with my uh, Kawandi style quilt that I started uh, yesterday. Um, and then luckily I read the comments on the video I put out yesterday first and Mary pointed out for me and I'm not offended Mary thank you for explaining to me what I was doing wrong but I, I should have gone back and watched the videos again it's a long time since I watched the videos um, that I found about how they make these quilts I did say I knew I knew I was doing it wrong I didn't realize how wrong I was though so let me show you what I mean I'm so glad Mary uh, pointed it out <laughs> and explained it really clearly for me so this is let me put these to one side as I said yesterday I, I know uh, traditionally it's done with um, uh, with scraps uh, but I did I had these to hand and I thought I might as well use them although it's not really in this in the spirit of the thing but yeah now I really got into this last night I was really enjoying it it was growing quite quickly Um, I do have a very soft finger and Christine also left a comment <laughs> and said please try and use a thimble because you're going to get a sore finger and she's right this finger particularly is very sore this morning um but I really enjoyed doing this but my stitches are a higgledy piggledy mess on the back going in all directions I think as Mary said I'm doing more of a kind of boho style Kawandi inspired really I have actually even changed the title of that video because I suddenly realized I actually titled it Kawandi Quilt which it really isn't so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on because I'm not going to unpickle this um, and I think it will still look pretty in the end and, and uh, do what I want I'm going to do this and make another one and turn the two of them into a, a tote bag I love to have different tote bags to use to put my um, ongoing uh, sort of crafty projects in and I'll probably line them with some of the brightly coloured uh, fabric as well so you can't see all this messy stitching so I'm going to do that and I'm going to keep using these this hodgepodge of fabrics to do that but at the same time let me actually I'll keep that here because it will help me explain what so what Mary has reminded me about and explained really nicely yeah. is that what I should have done is yes um, they do turn in the edges first and they do start from the outside and work in but what they do is follow the stitching the stitching goes all the way around the outside and works in towards the middle in a spiral fashion adding more pieces of fabric as you go along so rather than I'm, I'm sort of doing one piece at a time you do all of them at once so some of these are going to be quite sort of flapping around quite a bit while you're working on them um, and then once you've got that outer ring on probably with just a couple of rows of stitches you put a piece of wadding in a, squ a square of wadding in and then you start stitching over the top of that I don't think I'm going to go with proper wadding because I think already it was quite hard just getting through these thin fabrics I don't need it for warmth I don't need it to be particularly strong for what I'm going to use it for I don't know I mean it does it kind of gives it a bit more body doesn't it as um, I don't know I'll, I'll see how I feel as I go along but I don't want to make hard work of the stitching because I just won't enjoy it um, so I am going to keep doing this one as I as I've started and do another one similar I've got plenty of fabric there to do both and turn them into a useful tote and then I'm going to start another one and do it more well I'll, I'll do it as near as I can to the proper method I'm going to use some of the old scraps of fabrics that I've got now some of these are scraps that I've been hoarding for years some are bits and bobs that I got in amongst um, the packs I bought from Bizarre Fabrics, uh, not Fabrics, Bizarre, it's just called Bizarre the company. So I had a whole load of silks and things. I'm not going to try doing it with silk, but I did have in their mix packs I got some cottons and things. And these are, I think, Emily of Emily Art sent me a little a little pack of goodies at one point. And um, I think that came in amongst that. Was that from Emily's? No, that might have been from Johnny just Johnny Creations because we sent packages back and forth to each other a bit actually hmm, I've got two pieces of African kind of African designs that makes sense wouldn't it because the city people originated in Africa they're both the same so okay well I think that was meant to be they're gonna that's gonna be the back I think of my 
it's quite stiff okay i think that's going to be the back of my quilts and then i've got all sorts of things here all different weights some of these are oh, that came from my mother-in-law's house <laughs> yeah all kinds of bits and bobs here i've got a real hodgepodge of bits and bobs here yeah and probably use these sort of lighter well, I don't know if I want to put in things like this or do I? It might be fun, mightn't it? So I'll probably end up with a whole messy pile of fabrics in front of me or all around me. Some of these came from um, an upholstery scrap pack that I bought. Some of them would be a bit that one's already patched up, just turned it into a bag as it is. And um, I'll have to decide if I'm going to do the a bit of, of wadding or not. If I do, I could just use a bit of an old t-shirt or something. I don't want to use any of these pretty fabrics because they're not going to show anyway. And I've got loads of like old shirts and things like that I could use instead. Something with a little bit of body and softness to it. But I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to make too much hard work of it. So that's my plan. I'm just going to get that kind of started and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, I've had a bit of a... Um, sort out um, and I'm ready to go let me show you what I've got I've got my thimble ready Christine I'm gonna give it a go this is an old uh, buckle down one that I um, it, it came in a vintage work box that I bought and um, it actually fits quite nicely so I'm gonna give that a go I've got my little dinky scissors I've got my thread now what I've done is I've been through all of those fabrics and pulled out the ones that are reasonably lightweight but not too, some of them were so lightweight they're actually see-through the, the cottons um, and some of them were too heavy or textured to, to work with I think so um, yeah I've pulled out a whole mixture of these a lot of them came from the Indian recycled fabrics packs that I got from Bazaar. Um, this one was my uh, an apron that belonged to my late mother-in-law. Um, some of them I can't remember where they came from, but a lot of them are from all of these, all from those Indian packs. Some uh, shirt pockets for some reason. That one I've had for years, I think. I don't know, can't remember now. Anyway, so a bit of a hodgepodge mixture. Haven't taken too much notice of what colours there are or anything, but there's more than enough to cover this. Um, I've got my, I've picked up one of my African prints. I love the idea that because of the city people that um, invented this, this way of doing quilts are in India but they originated in Africa so we've got Indian and African fabrics mixed together which I love and I, I cut a piece of of that uh, fabric fabric that I got in the free contrado pack which I'm going to put in once I've got my outside layer done so this will be instead of wadding it'll give it a little bit more body but it's not going to be as much to go through as as, um, as actual wadding would be so that I've got my I'm going to use the slightly longer needle for this I think but it's still got it's got quite a big eye and a sharp point that's a bit longer and I'm going to use some of that cotton thread um, so the first thing is just to go all the way around the outside and just finger press the edges in like that I'm just going to press this all around so once I've once I've done that if I just I'm sure you don't want to sit and watch me do that Again, just finger press the edges. I only need to do two of the edges. Just start stitching along here and along there. So this time I'm going to do my stitching in a big spiral fashion all the way around and work towards the middle. So I'll stitch along here and along there. Then I'll introduce another piece. So I'm going to do that off camera and then come back and show you. Right, I've, um, I've started stitching around this one. And I've got to a point now where I've reached this, I've left this as a raw edge here. Um, I need to add in another piece of fabric. So I've got this little piece here. I've folded in two edges again. And I'm just going to overlap them like that. I hope I'm getting this a bit more. I'm doing this a bit more authentically this time. <laughs> I tried really hard to use the thimble. I can't. Oops, I'm not even sure which finger you're meant to put it on. I put it on this one because it's the one that got sore. But as soon as I've got it on, I, I can't, I can't feel what I'm doing. I 
and I end up <laughs> doing this and holding this one out the way. I just can't seem to. I can't do it. <laughs> I might have to get one of those. I'm sure I've got some somewhere, um, like a leather finger stool that I had for felting. I might try that instead, see if that works any better. Now this is already quite tough to push the um, needle through. So when, when I've got that extra layer of fabric as you know instead of wadding as well, it's going to get quite tough in places. I bet those city women have probably got calluses on those two fingers and thumb from sitting doing this all day every day. Okay, whoops. Um, so I need to add in another piece now. I'll add in one more piece and then I'll carry on working round and I'll come back and show you tomorrow when I've uh, hopefully worked, or in a couple of days when I've worked my way round and I'm ready to put my wadding in and start on the next round. I do wonder as well if it might be fun once I've done one and I feel more confident to experiment um, it might be fun to do one where you don't tuck the ends under where you, you know you use fabric like this and allow the edges to fray Christine if you're watching this and you've got any tips about how to actually use a thimble <laughs> Probably just need to persevere and get used to it really. Okay, that seems to have gone on all right now. Right, and now I need another new piece in. So I'm going to keep working on that and then um, I'll come back and see you in a couple of days um, and show you how I'm getting on. I'd be interested to see which method I prefer in the end. I've got a feeling once I get used to this one it'll feel more, it will kind of flow easier. I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, Thanks very much for watching today and um, thanks again Mary for, <laughs> for uh, pointing me in the right direction. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again really soon. Bye!